2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, everybody together. Let no man deceive you or let no preacher or man or anybody deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time for the mystery of iniquity, the opposite of the mystery of godliness, that is. The mystery of iniquity, the spirit of Antichrist, doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Amen. Father, we thank you that through the power of the word of God and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the Antichrist cannot manifest until we are taken out of the way. Praise the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. So you see here, we're going to, we are the ones that are going to be out of the way, out of the way of the Antichrist and right into the way who is the Lord Jesus, the truth and the life. Amen. So we said all of this to say this is what, what is going to happen. This is happening before our eyes. And uh, then we go to Matthew chapter 24 which is eschatological as well. And we are going to be starting from 12. And because iniquity, that's the last days, that's the description. And we must differentiate between the rapture and the second coming. Because at the rapture, at the point of the rapture, we'll see all of this deception taking place and the people of God will just be different amen will be different people are trying to intrude in the circles of the church and bring worthiness in the church but that's where the true sons of God are standing to really make the difference so it says because uh, verse 12 iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold who are the many who is referring to the love of many in order to have love for god amen it has to be those who once loved god how many how many of you know what's the reason demas or the mass lived for say forsook Paul and left him on the mission field why why did Demas uh, leave uh, uh, Apostle Paul and the ministry why because he loved this present world Agapisas ton baronda cosmon vimas men gatelipe o ena sapodo Apostle Paul says, one went into the world, the other got weary. Brothers and sisters, I want you to know I believe in revival, but the kind of revival that kept the Apostle Paul to continue the work of God to the end. That kind of revival. I believe in revival, that kind of revival, the fire of God that was in the Lord Jesus Christ for for the joy that was set before him, he endured the, endured the shame and despised shame. And because he could see what could be achieved on the cross, he saw you and me. That kind of revival. The Lord Jesus was forsaken by the tens of thousands. 
then by the thousands, and then by the seventies, and then by the twelves, and then by the threes. And he was left alone, yet he continued. Yet the last day Christians are looking for a mass revival that is going to be a national revival. No such a thing except the revival in Israel and through Israel to the whole world during the time of tribulation. You see, it's deception that is coming. It's backsliding that is coming. We see this all the time. So don't be caught in that. Don't be disappointed. Keep up the good work of faith until the end. We are going to be doing the work of God, preaching the word of God apart from a part of what is happening around us. And in the last days, perilous times shall come. Perilous, halibes, viscolous, epigindines, agrius. We were saying that and we just saw it happening. So, in the, in the last days, iniquity shall abound in and out the church. In and out the church. Uh, we, we, you know, we, we, we hear things happening that realize how come this be? And Lord is, the Lord is saying, watch lest you fall also. So uh, it says, test your faith. Test yourselves if you're in the faith. Dear brothers and sisters, we need the Lord. We need the Lord to stand. We need the Lord to stand and intercede for those who are falling and intercede for those who love this present world. We are going to be looking for the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't be discouraged. Don't go with the masses. Go with the word of God. Believe that the Lord Jesus is faithful to come at any time. Don't expect national revival everywhere and then the Lord will come. The Lord gave us the warning. A mass fall away will take place first. This is what is happening. And it's not going to happen. It's happening. But not to us in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Read the word. Read the word. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Amen. The one who endures to the end. Father, we thank you that you help us to hold on to our great rock of our salvation, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So we see all these things happening. I know you, nowadays you can listen on mass media uh, uh, you can listen whatever you like. If you don't like it, you just, you will find something you like. But don't go for what you like. Go for what the word of God says. Be a disciple of the Lord Jesus. Now, we, are, we, we want to take a look at some very powerful portions of scripture. Um, let, let's go to Psalms 129. And uh, we, uh, as believers, take a stand for Israel. We believe that it's the church that is going to stand for Israel. It is the church that will bless Israel and pray for the peace of Jerusalem and pray for the salvation. You know, when it says pray for the peace of Jerusalem, it, the, word, uh, the word salvation there, pray for uh, the peace, the word peace is the word shalom. Shalom is an all-inclusive peace. How many of you remember Romans 5 verse, when, verse 1? Being justified with faith, we have peace with God. Vikiothendes lipon ekpisteos, echomen irinin proston theon. So what happens when you're saved? Yeah, you are in peace with God. Yeah, so let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 129, please. Psalmos egadon ikosi enea. 
Psalms 129, a song of degrees or anavathmi, a song that goes from one step to another, a psalm that goes from one step to another. And the powerful thing here, many a time have they afflicted me from my youth, may Israel now say. Many a time have they afflicted me, verse 2, from my youth, yet they have not prevailed against me. The powers plowed upon my back, and here we see a specific, a specific reference about the Lord Jesus. That's a messianic prophecy. And at the same time, it's a prophecy, not just for the Messiah of Israel, but of Israel as well. The plowers plowed my back. They made long their furrows. furrows. So you see, uh, sometimes we wonder why these happening to me. If they've done this to the Lord Jesus, who am I not to suffer similar cases amen similar persecution that's what you expect don't ever have any complaints amen it's nothing before what the lord jesus has been through so this is a messianic prophecy and prophecy about israel and uh, we we continue in in that um and it says uh the lord is righteous he hath cut asunder the cords of the wicked. Let them be confounded and turn back that hate Zion or Zion in Hebrew. Let them be confounded. Let them, let them turn back those that hate Zion. Let me tell you something um, that you should always have as a... Uh, as a rule, as we said before about the rapture, we learn some hermeneutical laws that can explain the way we understand Scripture. Don't take prophecies that refer to Israel and apply to the church because in, uh, in, uh, in Haggai, Haggai, I, I, and Geos. And remember Pastor Israel, as we were talking about the, um, uh, the feast of the Lord, uh, he, he referred to the name Haggai in English, Haggai, it, that's the Englishized Hebrew name, or Angeos, that's a, a Greeklyized <laughs> version of the Hebrew name, but the name is Hagi. Hage. When we see E at the end, means my. Hag means hag. Hag hamatza. This is the feast of the unleavened bread. So the feast, in other words, Haga is the, he says, the Lord is my celebration, my feast. Amen. What a name. What a name. What a name to be named Hagi, the Lord is my feast. And he said in verses 7 and 8, The glory of the latter house shall be greater than the first. We apply it to the church and not to Israel. Make it our own and forget that the first application is Israel, then the church. But anyway, you see, there will be revival, but after the rapture, until then, there will be mass deception. Many shall wax cold. They will not love in the same way, but that be no you, not you, not me. Amen. Praise the Lord. So Haggai, Haggai, my Lord, my feast, my celebration. So, uh, yeah, this is what I was going to give you. We, we say, 
And we have, we have an issue in Cyprus with uh, uh, lots of land of Cyprus occupied. And this is very unfair. We know that. And many people, uh, there, there is uh, the Serbia, Kosovo, uh, there is uh, T China, Taiwan, and there's so many, so many disputed lands and so many areas of family feuds, national feuds, and all of this. But only one nation, only one nation has the promise, your enemies are my enemies. No other nation. No other nation. Don't take my words out of context. Amen. If you're doing something just, the Lord will be with you. And the Lord will help your nation through you. But the only nation that has this promise is the, the, the land and the people of Israel. Your enemies are my enemies. Those who love you, I will love. Those who curse you, I will just love them. Those who curse you, we don't like it. But that's the truth. Dear brothers and sisters, we have to accept the word of God as is. The only nation that has the promised land and has boundaries, not in the Apostolic and Tachtimatology of Stangeliga. It's like a, 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 a property registry. That's what they call the offices. Uh, uh, Land registration. Okay, so that's where you have the land registration. But the only nation that has land registration in the Bible is Israel. The only people that says, those who bless you are, will bless. Do, do we believe it? So we'll do it. Amen, that's it. We don't try to understand it, we do it. And we believe the word of God. So we do it by faith and then you find out it was the right thing to do because we believe the, the word of God. So let's bless Israel. Don't curse Israel. Don't listen to all this propaganda. To, to us, we made it very, very clear. Any little children that suffers, we are against the suffering of little children. We're against people dying unjustly and all of this. But it's not Israel that is attacking little children. It's not Israel that is attacking those who are not in combat, soldiers in combat. But Hezbollah is exactly doing that. They just kill anybody. That was a holocaust. That was the same spirit Hitler had that's exactly what happened. So Israel must defend themselves. So they said, all the people that are not in Hamas move out of this area. It's the only nation, it's the only army that before they attack, they drop leaflets, thousands of them, sending SMSs. And uh, issuing uh, warnings in social media. They use everything to av avoid uh, uh, human casualties. So they do everything, but they must do it unless they do it, unless they destroy Hamas. They, this will happen again. Did you know that 20,000 Gazans, Arabs, 20,000 were coming in the land they attacked and daily worked there and brought food back on the table in Gaza. Did you know that Israel was blessing these people? And Hamas wants to destroy not just Israel, but all of those, you know, they do this um, that cost to their own people. So bless Israel, pray for Israel. Yes, pray for the protection of Israel. Pray that this goal will be achieved. But there are so many things we can 
say, let's see what the Word of God says. And in the next um, six minutes, we're going to end this, um, this study and continue probably on Wednesday. But you have to see what the Word of God says. Amen. So I'm not giving you my opinion. I'm giving you the Word of God. So thus saith the Lord. Let them be confounded and turn back that hate Zion. Verse 6. Let them be as the grass upon the housetops, which withered the forehead groweth up, wherewith the mower filleth not his hand, nor he that bindeth sheep his bosom. Neither do they go by say, neither do they, they which go by say the blessing of the Lord be upon you we bless you in the name of the Lord you see they knew they carried the blessing of the Lord so let's go now to Psalms 83 Psalms 83 please Psalms 83 and as I said before um, just giving you some extra extra verses uh, we're going to go there in just a minute. Go first to Second Chronicles seven sixteen. This can stay opposite us. Second Chronicles seven seven sixteen. Go there um, in your Bibles. For now have I chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there for how long forever and mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually perpetually means forever eternally and 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 see it didn't say it's going to go back and forth and it's going to listen to this. God says, I set my name there. Now, I'm not of the ones who goes after signs. We shouldn't do that. But I refer to you about how the mountains on Jerusalem from a satellite picture, they design the letter Sheen like the W with a dot on top on the right side of the W Shin, which is Shaddai. The Hebrews know that this is the Al Shaddai. So God has literally put his name there on the wall. There came out bushes, bush uh, plants that they designed by themselves, kind of just coming out for everybody to see. Yud, hey, Vav, and there is something ready to show the last hey i mean no man can do that but anyway our eyes are all are not based on that but on the written word of god see here that the lord says i have chosen and sanctified this house my name so you cannot just go around and say you know the lord said that he will bless this house and this country and that country in fact only israel can say that we from the nations that have been saved that's why we can share with the blessing of Israel if we bless Israel. Amen. I have sanctified my name that my name may be there forever. And mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. Jerusalem. Just a little history of Jerusalem. Jerusalem has been destroyed two times. And it's back there again. It has been besieged 23 times. It has been attacked 52 times. It, can, it, has been, it has been captured and recaptured 44 times and still is there. Nobody can destroy Israel. Nobody can destroy the word of God. They tried, they can't. They tried. They can't. They try. They can't. Let's analyze Psalms 1, Psalms 83 in 1 minute and 22 seconds. 
a song or psalm of Asaph. 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 Now, he wrote the most psalms apart from stuff. Apart from David, David wrote most of them uh, in the 70s. Uh, and then Asaph and, and, and a couple of more. But Asaph was named as a prophet in the Gospels. So he is not just a poetry writer. The Lord says he's a prophet. Keep not thou silence, O God, hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God, for lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up their head, the head. They have taken crafty counsel, verse 3, against thy people and consulted against thy, thy hidden ones. The Lord is hiding them in his protection the lord is blessing them the lord is protecting them and we are praying for them hallelujah